Hey, I'm Christine, and I'll talk you through a few of the tools that I use for soldering. And now we're going to have a look at soldering irons. So in this case, this here is like a portable soldering iron. It's from a company called Miniware, and it's kind of great because they're hot swappable, which means if you want to change tips, because you can get different tips for soldering irons, then you can get these little ones. There's other small ones like this. Um, but you can also get much larger ones that you would put on your desk with temperature control. Um, so you may also eventually when you get you into your soldering style, you might want to choose a different tip. So I do love this very fine point angled one. That's one of my favorite tips. Today I'm going to be using this one. So you may look for a device that has temperature control, but you don't necessarily have to get a device with temperature control. When I first started soldering, that was not something that I had on my soldering iron anyways. So for a smaller one like this, you would control what the temperature was that you'd like it to go up to. So the other thing that you're going to need is solder and we have quite a few different types. So we have these ones on the reel and I've talked a little bit about, I always go for the lead free option. Um, so you can buy them on these reels. Again, you may want to check how thick um, your solder is. There are different thicknesses. When you're starting out, you may want to go for a slightly thicker one eventually. Um, so this one is a little thick now. I do love this uh, being in this form factor though. These are my favorite way to solder it. They're really easy to hold. And you can get them, look how thin that one is, which is fantastic for wearable circuits where you might be doing some very fine point soldering. So this one's a really good one. And again, in the tubes. If you buy one in a tube, you can then just re-roll your solder and refill the tubes with any solder that you like. So we might use this one or this one for today's demo, but the solder, as I say, check the temperature that is your melt point. You may always wanna do a few starter circuits if you've got a new solder. I usually go for lead free and it usually is about 200 to 20 um, for the melt point here and the leaded ones are usually a bit lower about 180. Um, leaded solder does make it a little easier but again it's it's up to you. This can be um, especially when we're using lead free is often, almost always actually, I use flux. So you might want to get it in these pen styles. So you just would tap this onto your wire or circuits, or you can buy like a large container of it. And then I take smaller containers and just put the flux in the container. And then what happens is you could, with your component, your wire end, is I would just take that and dip it straight into the flux. That can be a little bit easier to work with. Um, so it's up to you. If you choose flux, you don't have to have flux, uh, but it can make things go a little easier, especially when you're learning. There are so many different types of wires. So for wearables, I do always prefer silicone. The bend and movement on a silicone wire is really fantastic for the circuits that we'll be making. You can get them in different thicknesses, different styles. I normally have, again, lovely silicone. That one's quite a lot larger. Uh, I think this one's a 22. Um, it usually does say on the wire. And then again, I usually get a variety of colors. Um, I usually use reds and blacks for our power ground. And then these can be for different data, for example. Really good way to do it. You can also get wire like this, where you get several all kind of banded together. And this can be great, say you're putting a screen or similar on, and you would just peel these apart and then solder each one individually, but it can make your circuit look really super tidy because then you just have this one. And again, these are silicone. You can get them in different amounts. You can get three together or two even. Uh, sometimes I like to buy them worth a bit more so I can just rip them in half and use them as a three and similar. Uh, you can get solid core wire, which is great if you're using breadboards. I typically use this, um, the brass here. 
So this would be the brass for cleaning, solder tip cleaner. This has rosin flux in it. And this, you just give it a, a shimmy in there and it just cleans everything off your tin, your tip, sorry. And then you would just grab and give that a little tap in there as well. So this one's a chip quick one, again, lead free, and it is just a tip tinner. So it just, it helps keep your tin, your tip, sorry, covered. Um, which just kind of protects it and it's really it kind of makes it have a slightly longer life your tip You can get replacement tips or buy new soldering irons, obviously, but I prefer to keep my tools uh, Clean and tidy when I'm working So the last little thing I want to show you is this super cool mini fan So you can buy these online and this just helps pull away all of the solder smoke that kind of comes out when you're doing your circuits. And it has two different speeds and this can be a great thing to use while you're soldering. That's everything for today. I hope you've learned about some of the tools that you can use while soldering and stay tuned for other soldering videos where you can see how to do it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.